This is a great time here. We're live. We're headed toward our transformation weekend here in a couple of days. I'm excited about what the Lord is doing. I'm still fired up from the message Pastor Kent released last weekend that God is doing some new things. And I want to share a little verse here with you in Mark's Gospel, chapter 2, where it was Jesus was with a group of the Pharisees, and he was at somebody's house, and there was a man there who was sick. And Jesus was talking to him, and Jesus just spoke to the man who was sick, laying on the bed, told him, said, your sins are forgiven. And the Pharisee said, well, what are you doing, speaking blasphemy? And Jesus said, just so you'll know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the guy, said, take up your bed and walk. And immediately, the Bible said the guy was healed, picked up his bed, walked out of the house in front of everybody. And the NIV says, this amazed everyone. And they praised God saying, we've never seen anything like this. I don't know about you, but I believe the Lord is going to do stuff in us and for us and through us that we've never seen. He's got some new things that he wants to do because that's just how the Lord is. And I believe a lot of it is that he wants to do new things through us in reaping the harvest. In fact, Jesus did some new things. The Bible says in John 4, one day it says that he, he told the disciples, we must go through Samaria. Now that word must is interesting because it's used about 10 times in Jesus' ministry and it just means it's a necessity. I don't know about me and you, but in living life, there's things that are a necessity, things we must do. Well, in our spiritual walk, there's some things that we must do. And why this was so new was because in Jesus' day, nobody ever purposely went into Samaria. Why? Because the Jewish people, Hebraic people, they didn't hang out with the Samaritans because the Samaritans... Uh, and Jewish people that kind of intermarried and he came up with their own religion and their own idea stuff. And it was kind of like if you were traveling through Israel, and instead of going through Samaria, you would take the long route around. But Jesus said, no, we're going right through the middle. He said, it's a necessity that we go there. And sure enough, Jesus went and he got there and they, he was sitting down by Jacob's well. And you know, they'd been a long journey and people been walking and disciples were hungry and nothing thing being wrong with hungry. So they decided to go and look for lunch. And while they were gone, Jesus did something else new. A Samaritan lady came to get water and Jesus spoke to her and it astounded her. And then Jesus did the ultimate thing. He asked her, would you give me a cup of water? And man, it just blew the lady away. And Jesus just kept talking to her and got to talking to her about her life. And before you know it, she realized he was the Messiah. She realized that he could save and deliver and help her life. And she went back into the town. And the Bible says she told everybody, you need to come see. I found the Messiah. He told me everything about me. And the Bible said the whole town came out to see him and about why that was going on, the disciples came back and they and they told Jesus, you know, said, hey, you, you need to eat. Jesus said, no, you don't understand. He said, I've got meat to eat that you know not of. What was he saying? Well, he tells us later, he said, what was driving him? And this is a really important word because the Holy Spirit will lead us. But the Bible says in Mark 1, when Jesus went into the wilderness, the Holy Spirit drove him into the wilderness. It means that Jesus had such an unction. You've had it where you just knew you had to call that person or you knew you needed to go see that person. You just couldn't rest. That's what Jesus was saying. The Spirit of God is, just drives me into this. And he said, this is what keeps me going. This is what my life is all about. He said, is to do the will of God. And I want to tell you something, when you're in the will of God, doing the will of God, great and mighty and new things can happen. And sure enough, Jesus talked to the lady, told her what she, everything they had done. And then this is where Jesus gives us that verse we've heard so many times. 
He said, don't say that it's four months until harvest. He said, the fields are white until harvest. What Jesus was saying is, we can't just live for ourselves right now. When it became harvest time, everybody stopped their normal routine of life and they purposely focused on the harvest. Why? Because here's the thing we had to realize. Harvest season doesn't last forever. Even Jeremiah said, talks about the, said it's summertime, the harvest has ended, and there were people who were not saved. What we got to realize is that the harvest is here right now and the seasons is right now. And so the Lord is telling me and you, go out into the harvest. Why? Because he said, I want to do new things. There's no fear because I want to give you this promise today. Jesus said, as you go, here's the promise. Greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. Out in the harvest field, there are wheat and there are tares. And the spirit of the evil one exists in the world. But Jesus said, my spirit is greater than his spirit. And if you go in my name and my spirit, the Holy Ghost goes with you. Guess what? You're going to come back rejoicing, bringing your sheaves with you. There's new things on the horizon. They're right here today. Let's get involved. Lord, help us to do what you want us to do. Go where you want us to go. Say what you want us to say. And we'll be getting together and saying, look what the Lord has done. I love you. God bless you. See you later. Bye-bye.